I thought I was going to be the greatest player ever when I was a kid, when I was in college, but, you know, didn't get there. So it took me a long time to get to the Masters. Augusta is notoriously cruel to inexperience. But a good friend of mine on tour was best friends with Jack Nicklaus. And Jack Nicklaus, who had won the Masters six times, sat down, took his yards book out, and told him exactly how to play every hole. Exactly. Wow. So this is, you know, this is like Michelangelo taking you to the Sistine Chapel. You know, it's like, oh, let me show you this little part I drew over here. And so Jack tells my buddy Glenn Day this stuff and where to hit it and what shot shape to come into every green. And so I'm like, Glenn, I'm dogging you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You and I are playing practice round. So I had, as far as I could imagine, the best playbook imaginable <clears throat> to play Augusta National. So, this is like pre-analyst training almost. Yes, yes. This is what you're doing here almost. Yes, absolutely. And, and I, you know, I had it all in my book and... I shot, it wasn't like I shot any great low round. I shot 69, and, you know, it just ended up being, you know, tied for the low round, which is, look, great memorabilia from Augusta National. If you shoot the low score, they give you a, a crystal goblet, your name on it. Really? I made an eagle in the first round at the 13th hole. I hit a How long was the putt? long iron about three feet away. Almost, what? Almost made it. Again, back to your stat. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was playing with the eventual winner uh, in 99 was Jose Maria Alathabo, and I was playing with him. And we get to 13, and I drove it around the corner, sort of hanging lie. He, didn't, he was just behind me. And I had a great little, you know, sort of cut two hybrid up there that landed on the green and almost went in and stopped right behind the hole. And he thinned his long iron, and it hit short of Ray's Creek. It's short of the creek and skipped over it up onto the fringe. <laughs> The luck, the winner's and, uh, luck. <laughs> and uh, he makes the putt, and I make my putt, and we're walking off the green. I said, nice eagle. And he goes, no, no, no. Mine was shit. Yours was good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, the golf course is about taking risks and, and managing risks. You know, it's, uh, and, it, and it tempts you into to taking risks. You're doing things that you're not really comfortable doing with a really fine line of success and failure. You know, I, you know, I always say that, the, you know, the U.S. Open, those golf courses typically are about attrition, you know. Mm. It's about sooner or later you're going to stumble and the dragon's going to eat you. Okay? Right. But at Augusta, you get to slay the dragon, okay. You get to take on these amazing shots, and somebody's going to take them on. And, and the, the great thing about that design is <clears throat> it was designed – to encourage players to take on risk. So that's the genius in the design, and, and no shot illustrates that better than Phil Mickelson's second shot on the 13th hole, the final round in 2013, or excuse me, 2010. <clears throat> and that is what that design is about. So Phil's in the trees, he's on the pine straw, he's behind a tree, he's got a downhill lie, which is gonna make his shots go to the left, mm -hmm. okay? And the pin is tucked right over the water in a little corner on the right and the conversation with bones and bones clearly it seems like wants to you know give him these options tell him where he could go but you can tell he's biased towards the layup and phil says something along the lines of whoever's going to win this tournament is going to hit a great shot coming down the stretch and he's like it's going to be this shot i gotta hit a great shot at some point the winner's got to hit a great shot this is that moment and I mean, you can't set the stage any better than that. You can't have a more beautiful, I mean, it's the most beautiful and arguably the best par five from a strategic standpoint in the world. And you've got the, perhaps the greatest gambler the game has seen. Literally. Right? Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically. Uh, you know, he he's, he's, he's a fellow who, and if you heard him later explain the shot and what he was thinking on the David Faraday show, it was a it was a great bite. You can probably dig it up on YouTube, but he he explains all that was going through his mind and how he managed that risk, and he also managed that risk and reduced that risk in his mind. And this is what great athletes do. He gave you some insight in that interview with David Faraday into the workings of how a golfer talks him into talks himself into a shot that is fraught with danger, and he hits the most beautiful shot. Uh, out of that pine straw, hits a draw around the corner to about five feet. Now, he missed the putt, but, and people are like, wow, he didn't make the putt. I'm like, no, 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 no. 
what he did with that shot was, one, he didn't hit it in the water, two, he didn't make par, but he he avoided disaster with this miraculous shot, and then he went on to win. You know, he was the type of player that that golf course was designed for, um, at least in spirit. You know, Jack Nicklaus came along who, you know, hit it so good and managed wrist so well and was so good at long irons and hitting it high that, you know, he won more of them than anybody else. And, and, and that's what major championships are meant to be about. They're meant to be about who can hit it the highest, who can hit it the furthest, and who can hit it the straightest. Those are the three hardest things to do in golf. It's hard to hit the ball high. It's really hard to hit it long and really, really hard to hit it straight. Those are the hardest things to do in golf. And if you can do them, and only a handful of people have been able to do them in the history of golf, you're going to win all the tournaments. Can you create, in your mind, a the greatest hole at Augusta? Can you, can you, it doesn't stick out to you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at least in my view, it's, it's 13, um, you know, uh, because it, one, it, it has all the elements of, of control and risk and aesthetics. You got it all rolled into one. So you've, you've got to hit a very high quality, technically perfect shot to get in the right spot. You've got to hit a, a right to left shot around the corner, flirting with disaster going left to get in the low side of that fairway, the lower left side of that fairway, so that you've got as level a lie possible to hit then a cut shot off a hook lie into a green that has water front and on the right and very difficult pitch to the left. So you have to hit a real high quality right to left shot. Most everybody, it's, it's a draw, obviously. And then a real high quality high cut. And so you have to, if you don't pull that off, then you've got a huge question marks. But even if you do, uh, the ability to hit a high cut off a hook lie is a very difficult thing. And that is, more than any other shot at Augusta National, what champions need to have. The ability to hit a cut shot off a hook lie because so many important shots at Augusta National are cut shots off hook lies. You're told they all are. Yeah. Two. Well, one, for example, I mean, right out of the gate, you drive it down the right side or anywhere in that fairway, you've got a hook lie. The ball's above right. your feet. Now, obviously, if you're a left-handed player, it's the reverse. I mean, but Almost every hole is sloped right to left. That's right. So you're, you're trying then to hit a high, soft cut into these greens off a hook lie. That's why... Upright swings, faders, kick ass at Augusta National. And, that, and that's why when you see a player come along like Rory, who's got all the talent in the world and looks like he's inevitably going to win the Masters, for years I think he's changed a little bit. I think he's realized what he needs to do there from a strategic standpoint, technical standpoint. But for years, he's got a swing that drops to the inside. Now, yeah. if you've dropped it to the inside and you're playing a draw, you're now swinging into the slope. Okay? So you're going to hit the slope earlier with the heel of your club, which is going to shut it down. Right. And you're going to hit pull hooks off of hook lies instead of high cuts. So you're missing left of your so target you're all left. day. And or the you're, ball's going to run. It, it, right. So now you're going to be 40 feet left of the target and above the hole, which means you're putting de defensively. If you can hit a high cut off a hook lie, you're more apt to be, one, closer to the hole, but two, you're more apt to be underneath the hole with a hook putt. On average, you make hook putts from, let's say, the five o'clock position. Okay, if you yeah. can, if you can sort of get a visual of a of a sort of a clock face and the holes in the center. If you're in the five o'clock position, which is beneath the hole with a hook putt, you make that putt on average 25% more than you'll make a putt from the nine o'clock. So position. you're saying you want to be short right of the hole short in all right situations, hole, which is where fades get you. But generally speaking, high, softer shots get you closer to the hole.